welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably in a, some sort of state of lockdown, restriction, social distancing, all of these kind of things. And you might have fallen into the trap of thinking, oh, great, all this extra guilt free knitting time. Well, let me stop you there. Firstly, knitting time should always be guilt free. There should never be any guilt attached to knitting. It is self-care and self-care is not a selfish act. And while we're on the subject of self-care, most importantly, if you are spending a lot more time sitting knitting or crocheting or, or any kind of crafting than you normally do, you're probably not remembering to take breaks every now and then and be good to your body. That is also a very, very, very important piece of self-care. So I've put together a few minutes of knitsercise and I urge you, if you are sitting still and focused on what you're doing for any more than 45 minutes to an hour at a time, you want to break off, watch this video and let's get knitsercising, okay? First of all, put down your knitting, the book and the broom. No, just put down your knitting. It's important that you sit very, very upright. So if you can get yourself perched onto the edge of your armchair like this or onto a stool or something like that, you don't have to do anything particularly strenuous. This is just about getting air into the body, oxygenating the blood and making sure that all your muscles are as well fed as they possibly can. So the first thing to do is make sure we're nice and sitting upright and erect and take a nice deep breath. Now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean this at all, it means Really breathe low into the diaphragm, really let your stomach hang out and fill your lungs with air. Just do that a few times. Be aware of your own safety and if you start to feel giddy or dizzy at any point, just stop and come back to normal. But the good thing uh, to do is to breathe in through the nose. Hold the air in your lungs without cutting off the airways at the top and then breathe out. Breathe in through the nose and hold and out through the mouth. Do that a few times with me. Already you should be able to start feeling a little bit more alive. Now, one of the big areas of tension that we find with knitting and other crafting is in the neck and in the shoulders. And this area here needs a little bit of extra work. So very gently, just allow your head to fall forward and let the weight of your head just hang there forward. If you want to lean further forward and let gravity take you a little bit further on, that's good. You should feel that all the way down here, a nice little stretch, and then come back up to centre. So imagine that your head is being suspended and the weight of your body is hanging from it, and you get lots of space into the vertebrae. Roll forwards and up. Roll forwards and up. Then we're going to look over your right shoulder and to the front and the right shoulder. Probably a little bit of clicking and crunching going on here, but that's okay. And then tilt. Now this is a really, really lovely stretch and you should feel a good set of stretching going on there. A lot of tension gets held in the neck. It's always good to let it all go and stretch it out as much as possible. If you're feeling a bit gung-ho, you can just add a little bit of extra pressure here. Don't hang too much here, but you feel that stretch even more potently if you just add a little bit of weight from your hand there and on the other side as well. There we go. And here's a really expert one for you. Well, next time you go over to this side, if you tilt up to the top there, you get a whole different set of stretches. Back to the front and center, over to the side, and look up and back to the center. There we go. Now the shoulders, we're gonna work on these shoulders. So what we wanna do is bring them up by your ears and then allow them to drop down. Bring them up and drop down. Feel the weight of your shoulders pulling down here and everything nice and open. And up and drop and up and drop and up and drop. Now push your shoulders forward as far as you possibly can and then pull your shoulder blades back at the back of your spine like that and push forward and backwards and forward and backwards and forwards and backwards. That's lovely. If you've got room for this, stretch your arms up. You can't see what's going on there, but I'm just stretching my fingers up to the ceiling and take a nice deep breath and allow that to fall down. This time I want you to roll the shoulders forwards and backwards 
and forwards and backwards. And maybe just one at a time, one. And then the other, I don't know if you can hear that, my right shoulder grinds a bit. And then backwards, one. And then the other. Very nice, and give your shoulders a nice little shake. Be careful if you're not wearing a sports bra and if you feel you should before you give a nice little shimmy, but it's good to get that exercise moving. Now, the next thing is quite difficult. I want you to pivot from the waist and bring your whole rib cage over to the side and back to the center and all the way over to the side. Never push past what's comfortable. Just work to your own body's limitations. And then this time I want you to just take a one arm up to the top and slightly pull away. You don't have to bend very far. What you're doing is just opening up the rib cage here and stretching all of these muscles. All the intercostal muscles between the rib cage need a nice little piece of opening up as well. And it'll help you get a nice deep breath in. And then the other side, up to the top and just, you can either feel like you're pulling away that way or you can feel like you're pushing into your rib cage that way. Either way, you're gonna get that lovely nice stretch there. One more time each side, up to the top and push away and up to the top and push away. Now we're gonna work on our elbows. Elbows get a lot of stress. So if you just bring your arms forward and backward like this, just a few times working the bicep here and as we straighten the triceps underneath here, good for those bingo wings. Try it with your hands facing up to the top and your hands facing to the bottom. You see there's a different set of stretches going on there. And wiggle the fingers, wiggle them as, make the movements as big as you possibly can. And scrunch your hand and splay them out. Scrunch and splay and scrunch and splay and scrunch and splay. Scrunch and splay and scrunch and splay. And work the wrists, outward circles, and then inward circles. This is probably feeling like quite a heavy workout for you now. So remember to breathe all the time. Remember to breathe in through the nose. Hold for a couple of seconds and out through the mouth. If you do that a couple of times a day, hopefully you'll find the aches and pains that you develop and you build up over a long day of crafting, knitting, crocheting, whatever it is you're doing, will hopefully all melt away and you'll be able to carry on doing what you do for many, many years to come. Happy crafting, have a wonderful day and keep safe. Hello, it's me again. Don't worry, the podcast really is over. I've just popped in, however, to say if you enjoyed it and you want to make sure you never miss another episode, why not click on this handy little subscribe button right here. Don't say I never do anything for you. Or if you're worried that you might have missed out on some really fun stuff from previous episodes, I've got a playlist link for you here, which has got all of the previous Sock Magician podcast episodes on it. So you never need to feel out of the loop again. Bye for now.